Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Preston Outdoors. This week's tackle video we're going to be talking about the swim jigs. Now with a lot of the jigs that you have, um, either it be a finesse jig, a football jig, a flipping jig, a pitching jig, a structure jig, archie style jig, you can all swim those kinds of jigs, but a swim jig head design is what's designed for swimming. The swim jig's head right here, it's designed for more of the swimming action to be able to go through different styles of cover. Now that doesn't mean you can't swim different styles of jigs, it's just that this is designed for the swimming action, not so much hopping off the bottom and stuff like that. Most of the time the two style trailers I'm going to be using when I'm using a swim jig are something like this. This is one of my homemade uh, craw baits, something with a good twittering action for the claws, and then some sort of swim bait. You know, whatever your favorite kind of swim bait is that you like to throw on there. This is a Gander Mountain Swim Minnow. And again, this is just a, a craw bait that I've, I've got the molds for and make myself that I've shown you guys on a previous video. Most of the time, starting off in the year, I'm going to be throwing a swim bait. Now, this is a 5-inch swim bait. I do throw this uh, most of the time on a heavier swim jig. I'm going to go into that in a little bit. But most of the time, I'll be starting off the year if I'm going to be throwing a swim jig with a three and a half inch bait, something smaller, and these these paddle tail or swim baits, they almost give it a more subtle subtle action to the skirt and to the bait itself. So again, earlier in the year, later in the year, I'm going to be using some subtle subtle trailers on these jigs. So then, vice versa, I'm going to be using a bait that has more action to it. This craw bait. I'm going to be using this later in the pre-spawn, just as they're getting close to staging them on beds, even on beds. Sometimes, you know, this this live action, this harder style thumping or twittering action, will give the give the fish more of a reaction style bite. And then after they're done spawning, most of the time, I'm going to be throwing the crayfish style bait, unless I'm in a lake where there's mostly going to be bait fish feeding or shad. So it all depends on the forage that you're fishing. If you're fishing a shad lake or you're fishing a big bluegill lake or you know it just depends on what what the bass are feeding on. A lot of the times this crayfish on the back of a jig, the back of a swim jig like I have here. Now I have the three and a half inch paddle tail on this swim jig that looks like a bluegill. I'll be throwing this earlier in the year, but then, or tougher conditions again with the more subtle bait, I'll be throwing this. But this crawfish doesn't have to represent just a crawfish when I'm swimming it. So if I want more action, I would take this paddle tail off and I'd put this crawfish on there. The hard kicking action of this crayfish bait on the back of this swim jig almost looks like a really aggressive bluegill swimming around. So it's not necessarily. Uh, mimicking a crayfish on the bottom or swimming along this makes it look like a very very aggressive bluegill when it's behind this bait most of the time when i'm going to be fishing the, a swim jig i'm going to be relating to the fish species or the bait fish that are in a lake so again most of the lakes i'm going to be fishing have a bluegill as bait or you know other kinds of fish to where even a white swim jig you know if you have shad a white swim jig would be good too or then I have what's just called a you know a sexy shad has a little gray in there for breaking up stuff like that so I keep my swim jigs mostly the colors pretty pretty simple I don't fish a lot of lakes with shad so I don't use the white one as much I fish some darker stained lakes or even some some lakes that you know if it's if it's really cloudy out or something like that and I want to go for a dark color or if I feel they're on a darker color bait I throw black and blue so most of the time I'm gonna throw the bluegill color and I'm gonna throw black and blue to switch it up some though I will throw the sexy shad in there on kind of off cloudy days depending on what the fish are but I hardly ever throw white because up here in the north there's not a lot of lakes that I fish that have shad so you got to know the style the style of or the color I should say color of the bait you want to throw but know the lakes you're gonna fish and the bait fish that are in that lake so around mid to late summer, I should say more towards midsummer of last year is when I really started fishing the swim jig. It was actually during a tournament. A partner and I were just crushing bass for the first half of the tournament on, on spinner baits. And then the sun came out and it kind of wind started boiling down. And most of the time that's where the topwater bite really came on strong. But none of that happened for us. 
and we ended up fishing fourth in that tournament. I don't remember how many um, pounds we had or anything like that, but the team that really whooped up on everybody got to talking to them some, and they told me they were throwing a swim jig, and I never even owned a swim jig. So I went and bought some of these Strike King ones and played around with it, and a lot of times I found out just from talking to them and then personal experiences, a swim jig is something I'm going to fish like a spinnerbait. I'm going to fish the same cover as, a spin, as I would normally a spinnerbait. I'm going to throw it in the same spots as a spinnerbait. But it's I almost consider it a subtle spinnerbait. That's just the way I put, put it all together. It's a subtle spinnerbait. If the spinnerbait bite or the chatterbait bite just isn't happening, this is something where I'm going to pick up a swim jig. It's just a little bit subtler. Now, I do see if I can find it here. Like I said, this one is a half ounce swim jig. I do like fishing, again, like most of my other videos, I do like fishing heavier stuff, bigger bigger jigs, everything like that. If I'm looking for the one big, big bite, I'm going to throw something like this, and I'm just going to thread this on here quick. This is, again, this is a 5-inch swim minnow. And when I'm throwing these big jigs, the big, you know, swim jigs here, I'm, I like a big trailer on there. This is a 5-inch. This is pretty big. Look how big that jig ends up being. That's a pretty big jig. And I'll cut down that swim bait a little bit. But that's a big, this is a big bait. This is something I would throw for bigger fish or I need that one big bite for my kicker and my stringer. Otherwise, this is the one of the times where I'm going to fish a little bit smaller of a bait is in the swim jig. It's not so imposing as, say, this big one, and it's not as flashy and as intimidating as a swim or a spinnerbait, excuse me, but I'm going to throw this in the same areas as that spinnerbait. Now, I'm a subscriber to Bass University, uh, Bass University TV, and I was watching the other week, or it wasn't the other week, it was a couple months ago. I was watching a video by Bill Lowen, and he's basically considered the master of the swim jig and stuff like that. So a tip that he was saying in that video that I'm definitely going to be using next year, but I want to tell you guys about it because most of the time I'm going to throw that swim jig or I'm going to pitch that swim jig out, let it go down. I'm just going to slowly reel it in and maybe jerk it, you know, just to pulsate the skirt. But Bill Lowen, every time he throws his swim jig out there, lets it get to the depth he wants, he's going to reel it and every he's going to reel, and this is my rod tip here, reel and pump. And he's going to be continually doing that. And he said that's basically all he does for his retrieve. Maybe a big jerk or something like that. But most of the time just reeling and pumping or even sometimes shaking it. Because what that's going to do, that pumping action is do every time you pump it, it's going to pump that forward. And in the water, that skirt's just going to woo, woo. You know, it's just going to give that big pulsing action. Really, really giving your trailer the extra life it needs to look like the bait fish you're trying to get. So throw it out there and just kind of, you can, he said you play with the different pumping actions. You can pump it quick or you can pump it, pump it, reel and pump it slowly, stuff like that. But he said he is always, always pumping his rod tip when fishing a swim jig. Now for me, I fished it exactly like a spinnerbait. Threw it to wherever a spinnerbait, I would normally throw a spinnerbait, like I just said, and I would just reel it in really, really slow allowing this trailer to do all the action. But that's something definitely that makes total sense when you're acting with this skirt, giving it that pulsation. It almost looks like gills breathing for the fish when that thing pulsates like the gill covers on a fish opening and closing. So that's another technique that I learned from watching those videos from the professionals. They thought I'd let you guys know about it too because it's something I'm definitely going to be using next year. So I want to thank you guys for watching this week's tackle video. Again, we got the boat back here in the next couple of weeks. We're going to be doing some pre-fishing vlogs and stuff like that for an upcoming tournament I'm having. I got a lot of other plans um, in the works right now for some new videos coming. I want to thank you guys for being patient with me. Again, next week we're going to be pulling out the jig box and we're going to be pulling out what I like to call an all-around jig it's like a flipping jig pitching jig stuff like that i just call them all around jigs for for certain situations so we're going to be pulling off these these next week right here and talking about those but i want to thank you guys for watching this week thanks for the subscribers and the new subscribers we're getting there's going to be more and exciting videos coming your way in the highlight videos as soon as the bass fishing really starts kicking off here and i'll be getting them be getting them right to you guys and hope you guys really enjoy those but i hope you guys are also learning something about these tackle videos just me talking about my tackle boxes and um, how I fish things and you can always learn something from 
from different people. So I want to thank you guys for watching and tune in next week to Preston Outdoors.